and this causes a really dramatical shift. Dramatical? Okay. Hey nerds, Michaela again, and I am recording my second video of the day. It's gonna be the first of the three videos I'm recording today that you're seeing, but I already recorded one out on the patio earlier. That was very nice. Uh, it was nice for me to record. I'm not saying the video is nice. I haven't edited it yet. You haven't seen it yet. Who knows? It could be garbage. It is pretty early in the morning. I think it is like what? It's about quarter after eight. So uh, the lights, what it is, <laughs> it'll probably change over the course of the video. So sorry. Like I said, there are three videos that I want to record today uh, just to get them all out of the way. So I'm starting really early and here we are. This video is going to be a book review for a book that came out in 2016. So timely as always. And it is a book that since I finished it, I have had a very hard time articulating my thoughts and feelings on it because there are a lot of them and I don't know which ones are like more important than the others. I think I'm mostly just disappointed with how disappointed I am with the book. And the book is The Power by Naomi Alderman. You can see when you flip through this book, so like pages and pages and pages and pages of praise for this book. It has received glowing reviews from basically everybody, including like fucking Barack Obama. And I was so sure that when I started reading it, I was going to fall in love with it. And I did at first, I was I was all in from the beginning, right? Like I was so excited. I wanted to like meet every character, every new character that got to me. I wanted to meet them. And I wanted to like every turn, every twist, I was like on board. And then I just wasn't excited anymore. It was a gradual but definite decline where like the more I read, the less on board I was for what I was reading. More than that, the more I thought about what I was reading, the less I was on board for it. This isn't to say that the power is bad. I do not think that the power is bad, but it could have been a hell of a lot better. And that's what I want to talk about. So the power is a speculative fiction novel. I like speculative fiction because the concepts are typically very straightforward, but the author gets a lot of leeway to creatively answer the question because that's what speculative fiction is. It's a question. The author asks a question, usually a what if question, and then they seek to answer that question through the telling of the story. So The Handmaid's Tale is probably one of the most famous speculative fiction novels in like the English language. And in that book, the question is, what if the birth rate across the globe suddenly plummeted with seemingly no explanation? And then Margaret Atwood proposes an answer to that question through her story, right? Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman is also a speculative fiction novel. And the question in that book is what if the Southern California area very suddenly ran out of water and they seek to answer that question through their story. You don't have to agree with the answers that they give, but it is their job as writers to make their answers and the world surrounding those answers feel real and specific and honest, even though they are by definition not reality. The question that Naomi Alderman poses in The Power is, what if the socio-political balance between the genders suddenly flipped so that women had physical power over men? And listen, that's a great question. That's an interesting question. It's a question that I think you could pose to a dozen different authors and get a dozen different answers. Here comes the sun, do 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 do, right in my eyes. I literally can't even see the camera. It's like directly in my eye holes. But whether or not you or I agree with Naomi Alderman's answer to the question she poses isn't as important as whether or not she justifies her answer in the text. The problem is she doesn't. She doesn't justify her answer in this text. And not only that, but I also don't like her answer. I think her answer is bad. So like that's a double whammy. So a quick rundown of our plot. This story takes place like in our modern times. And one day young girls start developing this ability to shock people through their hands. So like sort of think lightning, electricity bending from Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, and they are able to pass this ability on to older women 
and it turns out it comes from this like gland that has like suddenly evolved or developed in the clavicles of women and it's like new babies female babies being born also like all of them have this gland and all of a sudden women can hurt and you know subdue and kill men basically whenever they want and this causes a really dramatical shift dramatical okay and this causes a really dramatic shift in the socio-political balance of the world i do want to reiterate that i think this is a fantastic idea but as fantastic an idea as it is it does present one sort of like fundamental hiccup that i think sort of throws a wrench in the entire concept of this book and because it doesn't get addressed i think that is this book's ultimate downfall by making the catalyst for this socio-political shift something physical this ability for women to physically overpower men the book posits that the reason that men have established and maintained a patriarchy patriarchy over women in almost every single sociocultural group since the dawn of civilization is that they are physically dominant over us and like yes to a degree there is no denying that sexual dimorphism played a role in the social structure of basically every culture ever but at this point it's hard to deny that men's continual social dominance over women has less to do with physical dominance and more to do with the way that power accumulates over time with people who have more of it gaining more of it and then people who have less of it losing more of it this is not to say that men don't have a long history of imposing physical force on women in order to make them submit to their will because they do and that history runs right up to today of course it does but god this sun is brutal oh my god where's the pillow i need a pillow oh my god pillows it's still not like ideal but we're doing what we're doing <laughs> the makeshift thing going on behind my camera right now is an engineering tour de force the patriarchy is so much more than men imposing physical dominance over women it's psychological it's legal it's systemic it's cultural the forces that keep men in power are so much more complicated and widespread and difficult to understand than just the physical this book explores almost none of that we don't get any actual years in this book so i'm just gonna make some up just to make talking about this easier so this book came out in 2016 so we'll say that the action of the book starts in 2016. so 2016 is when young girls start developing this ability and being able to pass it on to older women, right so by like 2020 2021 there has been a complete shift sociocultural and sociopolitical power shift across the globe women are in charge almost everywhere gangs of women are terrorizing and raping men women are employing the same types of microaggressions that men used against us every day and there's no explanation for it we are left to believe that six to ten thousand years of human history shifts on a dime because women can kill men First of all, guns exist. So there's that. <laughs> like technically we could have done this whenever. Second, <laughs> I think it's a really fucking bold claim to make to imply that all it takes for women to start acting exactly like men is for us to be able to physically overpower them. Like it ignores all of the other shit that goes into maintaining the patriarchy. It reduces power to merely the physical when we know that's not the case. Third, it also ignores the fact that women have been facing oppression at the hands of men for basically like forever. And this book never really delves into what effect that would have on a newly liberated population. Basically every single woman in this book starts using and abusing and manipulating men exactly as men do women. And the justification given for it is because they can. There is no explanation of different women exploring their new power differently, of world leaders showing like grace and compassion, of an attempt at establishing a more egalitarian society anywhere. If that happens, it doesn't happen on the pages of this book. 
Again, this ignores the centuries and millennia of trauma that women have endured and passed down to their daughters. And to say that this trauma would result almost exclusively in the violent subjugation of men is sad. Like, it's fucking bleak. And Alderman does nothing to support her argument that this would be the case. Like, bands of women roaming around, abusing, assaulting, and killing men? No explanation is given for this. She doesn't say why she thinks this would happen, just that they can. And I'm sorry that just isn't enough. Men don't abuse women because they can. Men abuse women because it maintains their power. Because it's what they've been taught to do over generations. Because our culture is dependent on that kind of abuse and subjugation. The same isn't true for men abusing women, so if you're going to say that that's what happens, you have to give a reason why. Okay, honestly, the wildest part of this book for me was the end, so if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, you can skip to the time stamp on the screen, but honestly it's kind of important, so it's up to you. When the action of this book starts, it starts with um, a page saying like 10 years to go, and then the sections of the book count down from there with no indication as to what we're counting down to. And when, <laughs> and when we get there, I swear to god y'all, I can't make this up, there's a nuclear war. Naomi Alderman in this book argues that if women were to physically gain power over men, it would take one single decade for nuclear fallout to happen. One fucking decade. Can you imagine? No justification given, no rationale for why she thinks this would happen. Things just happen because they happen and no justification is ever given. Listen, I don't want to get into an argument about like who makes better leaders and like the temperaments of men and women, all that shit, because I don't think it's like super important to this conversation and I don't have that kind of time. But like we have real world, real time evidence of women being effective, judicious, compassionate world leaders. We know that countries led by women have much better COVID spread and death rates than countries led by men, for example. We know that states in the US led by women tend to have more diverse leaders overall. We know that work groups led by women tend to have better communication and better, uh, more efficient workflow. All of this is general, of course, and there's no denying that there have been truly awful female world leaders and truly wonderful male world leaders. Like, there's no denying that women have the ability to be monsters. But I personally imagine that if women were to suddenly gain the sociopolitical advantage over men, the results would exist on the spectrum and would vary all over the world. I think a lot of terrible things would happen. Yeah, including the exploitation and abuse of that power by women. But I also think some wonderful things could result from it too. But here's the thing. If Naomi Alderman truly believes that women becoming sociopolitically dominant over men would only result in terrible things and no good things, fine. She's entitled to that opinion. But it is her responsibility as the author to justify that opinion. And I just don't think she supports her argument. The women in the story rarely give a justification for their actions. They rarely have ever stopped to consider their own histories of oppression and abuse. And as a result, this story feels empty, like a series of events chained together and not like an actual story. So that is my big problem with this book. It's an argument with no backup. There are other things, of course, that go into making a story. This book follows a handful of different characters, but there were only two whose plot lines I was really invested in following. One is Allie, who sort of becomes this, like Christ-like figure uh, in this new religion that develops around women and this new ability. And the other is Tunde, who is a male journalist following the sort of power shifts all over the globe over the course of this book. Both of those plots were super interesting and I really enjoyed following them. That was when I was like the most engaged in the book is during those two characters chapters. Um, every other character I went back and forth on. This book also completely overlooked anything to do with like gender identity and the, there were like no transgender characters and I think that was a real miss. Like that would have been an incredibly interesting opportunity to talk about like gender and sex and like this book talks a lot about men and women but like what about trans people 
you know, how are trans people affected by this? Do some trans people get this new gland, this new power, and like others don't? Um, we do see in this book a handful of men actually do develop the ability and it's considered a genetic abnormality. How does that intersect with gender identity like there were lots of opportunities for interesting questions that like just flat out didn't get asked like there was just no curiosity there were a lot of times in this book i didn't always know necessarily what was going on i also didn't always know where we were i didn't realize until like really late in the game that a lot of this book takes place in this country called besapara which is a fictional country that sort of like crops up um as sort of this like safe haven type country for women where like it's sort of like I can't think of an example, but it's sort of like a, a women-centric country. I don't remember where it is. I think maybe Africa, but like I could be totally wrong. No, it was like Eastern Europe. Truly, I don't know. But it was not always clear on when we were there and when we were in another country like the US or the UK. So I found that really frustrating, but the writing wasn't terrible. I found this pretty easy to read and like keep reading. Like I didn't want to put it down or anything. One element that I keep going back and forth on is the framing device. So basically, the novel that we're reading is supposed to be a novelization of historical events written 5,000 years after the events of this book take place. There's a lot of information that the writer of this book, a man named Neil, doesn't know or is like filling the blanks on, which to me led me to believe that like maybe we can't trust everything we're reading and I don't know how I felt about that. Part of me likes it, but part of me is also frustrated because I think I'm actually more interested in what the world looks like 5,000 years in the future instead of what the world looks like right after the shift, mostly because I don't agree with Alderman's hypothesis for what the world will look like right after the shift, so I guess I would rather read about what the world looks like in 5,000 years. So I gave this book three stars. I waffled back and forth on three and four for a long time because I still felt, even after I was reading it, even though as I was moving along I was getting more and more like just down and like so disappointed by it I was still convinced like I have to give this a four because so many people love this and this is such a beloved and awarded and lauded book of course it, like it deserves a four but ultimately I had to ask myself do I like this book and the answer is no I don't dislike it either although I did dislike certain aspects of it including its fundamental argument oh my god do i dislike this book well i mean it's too late i've already rated it on goodreads so that is all i have to say um i'm mad that this book was so disappointing to me i am mad that it's not as good as i thought i've been looking forward to reading this book for like literally years i remember when it came out and i was like i'm gonna read this book someday and i'm gonna love it and i didn't and that sucks and i'm not happy about it um have you read this book did you love it? Do you think I'm a stupid idiot? Do you agree with me? Were you also disappointed? Please let me know. The book had like, it was in the three stars, like the average rating, it was like between three and four. So like, I'm clearly not the only one who like, isn't thrilled with this book, but let me know what you think. Um, Cause I, I wanna know if I'm like all alone here on this like island of not liking this book. So um, that is all I have for you for this one. I'm going to record yet a third video and then I'll hopefully be done for the day. My throat is already very dry and I have more to go. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.